another uh, issue I have today, which is these oil, stop the oil protesters back in the UK have started doing more and more acts of wanton vandalism. We've got a little mashup of their antics in the last few days. We've seen them dropping milk in supermarkets at a time of a cost of living crisis, the like of which most of us have never seen, uh, which seems an extraordinary act for trying to get public sympathy. They've also been lying in the middle of roads and uh, closing big bridges and uh, big uh, tunnels and so on. So I, I think my overriding view of these people is the more of this they do, whatever the merits of the cause that they're fighting for, which is climate change and about the over excessive use of oil around the world, it's eroding by the second with these acts of childish, petty, pathetic vandalism. Am I wrong? Anyone want to defend these people? Well, I'd personally say that I agree that that kind of act is not helpful for the cause at all. Um, it makes it look like it's all a kind of teenage, teenage protest mm. and a kind of sulky teenager pouting, if you like. Um, but at the same time, I think that it also reflects deep concern about what the UK is going to do next on this front. Um, the UK did have a pretty sensible set of policies. Um, one of the many things that appeared to be happening under trust was that some of these were being reversed. And so at the same time as saying that this kind of act pouring milk down in the supermarkets mm. is pretty dumb, it's equally dumb to not have some kind of coherent government policy to switch rapidly to renewable right. energy. I mean, these things can both be true. I mean, my view about the yeah. renewable energy of the fossil fuels is you can't do it all in one go. No. And my God, we've discovered this year that the energy situation is pretty desperate for everyone. And in the short term, we need fossil fuels just to survive. Sure. But we are going to have to try as a planet to move to renewables. The issue at the moment is the cost and availability, right? Yes, absolutely. But I don't think that these guys should be part of that debate. That's a serious debate for serious people. Mm. And when I look at that picture of them throwing paint at Van Gogh sunflowers, I felt anger internally, and that's what they wanted me mm. to feel. If you think about their protests, attacking the cenotaph, uh, dumping a bucket of feces over a mm. statue of Captain Tom, yeah. they are not actually as childish as you think. They are carefully designed to provoke an emotional reaction mm. of fury in the British people. It's a bit like when the vegans start, the, ve the yeah. extreme vegans start shrieking away and doing mad things. It makes me want to go and order a Big Mac. Yeah. Um, Vicky, before yeah. we let you go, I want to talk just quickly about... Another story in the news this week, Prince Andrew and Ghislaine Maxwell, her first interview mm. from the prison. You obviously had an interest here. You <coughs> had a big scoop about Epstein, which got suppressed. Yeah. Um, Ghislaine Maxwell comes out supportive of Andrew. His friends are telling the papers this is the last thing he needs right now as he tries to rehabilitate himself. What do you make of it? You know, I think Ghislaine Maxwell is very clever and it was very clever messaging mm. on her part. Basically, what she was telegraphing in just a few sentences was, you know, Prince Andrew is still in my world. Mm. Uh, Bill Clinton, she called him a special friend. But you don't want to be called my dear friend by a convicted sex monster, Well, no, it's not, good. It's, monster, it's, it's not good for them, but I think it's telling about her state yeah. of mind, which speaks again to the trial that we went through and the crime. Is there any doubt for you committed. that Ghislaine Maxwell was up to her neck in it as much as Epstein, that she knew a lot of the stuff that was going on? And was a willing she, she, no, I sat through the trial. She, she clearly knew what was going on. She was not, by any stretch, mm. the only person who knew what was going on. And, and what's really troubling, and why I think she's called out these men, is that the men are who's missing from this story. And okay, I, would, before... I would echo that, because she wrote a gr done a great podcast on that, and it really is very unfair how the spotlight has been so much on the women. And so well, only because the man killed himself, right? Well, Otherwise, no, but other men, men. Other other men, men. All other the men. men. No, I agree. There's lots yeah. of very powerful people, and they should all be held to account. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Before we go, final one-word answer. Will this trust survive till the end of the week? Probably till the end of the week, but not much longer than that. Um, I hope not. <laughs> I'm going to echo my very clever friend. I'm going to say an emphatic, <laughs> simple... Because I did say one-word answer. No. <laughs> She'll be gone at the end of the week, and if not, the world's gone nuts. Oh, thank you to my stellar pack. This is we have to do this again. I love this. Thank you. <laughs>